Hey everyone, welcome to Meeple Bits. Thanks for joining me for this setup and how to for the game Korra, a game for two to four players with a playtime of about 75 minutes. So join me as we go through this setup and how to and the, how we're going to tackle this one, just to preface this in advance, is the player boards have essentially the phase track listed on them. So instead of kind of addressing it uh, up front, we're going to go through the individual phases while addressing um, what those phases are in the, you know, what to do on your turn, so to speak. So join me as we go through this. And of course, if you have any questions at the end of the video or corrections, please feel free to comment down below. Hey everyone, welcome to what will be a two-player setup and how-to for the game Flora. To begin, make sure all players have received a player board and all the pieces corresponding to the color of their board. Additionally, place the main play board in the center of the table for all players to reach. We'll go through the setup with the main board in just a moment. Starting with the player boards, let's dive a little bit closer. Once each player has all the tokens and tiles of their color, hand out each player a civilization. For purposes of this demonstration, we're going to use Athens for orange and Olympia for the blue player. So player one and player two. These should be dealt out at random. That way you're ready to begin the rest of setup for your, um, for your civilization. So we're going to finish setting up these player boards Fast forward and come right back once this setup is complete and we'll describe exactly what we've done. Okay, and we're back. So what we've done is all players should have five tokens. You should also have markers for each of the three tracks on your main play board. You should have four markers for the four tracks on the board in addition to one extra marker for the victory point track, which is currently off screen. So what you want to do is you want to place your two dice that you start with off to the side, place one dice into the die holder on the culture track, place the cylinder on the economy track, place the sort of, um, I don't know, pillar on the culture track and the shield on the military track. All players should be set up identically like this to begin uh, the game. Now, things are going to change once we begin looking at the civilizations and their individual powers. But place your triangle in the lowest position of the civilization track off to the side. Next, you want to shuffle the um, politics cards as indicated with the three colored background. Shuffle them, placing them off to the side in a draw pile and draw five for each active player at the table. And lastly, take the drachmi, which come in two denominations, five gold and one um, silver, and place them in a draw pile for all players to reach, and give each player four drachmi to begin the game. Once finished, you are, you are finished with the main, play the main player board setup. Now we're going to focus on the main play area setup. So up here, we have a section matching the five tiles. These are conditions that can be met by players, which will yield additional bonuses throughout the game. When a player completes um, such a um, achievement, they will put their achievement tile covering it, indicating that it's already been claimed. We'll go through that more in just a bit. Next, all players should have a token on the citizens, tax, glory, and troops. Finally, we're going to set up the, um, the expedition tiles with the corresponding pieces as indicated on the board. They will come in these military tokens, these glory tiled tokens, and these uh, cultures type tokens. Up here, you'll notice that uh, these don't have a indication or a wreath around them. Um, so you want to make sure that when dealing out these tiles, that you correspond the ones that have the wreath like so, versus the ones that do not have the wreath, like so. So we're gonna finish filling up this board and come back in just a moment. So once you've completed pass or dealing out all the tokens on the main play board, it should look something like this. Make sure that these um, wreath tokens in Persepolis have um, all three have the ones with the wreath. Otherwise, everything else is there. And then all the extra tokens, you want to create a supply off to the side. 
And the last bit of tokens that you need to create a supply for are going to be your philosophy tokens. They look like little scrolls. So once you're ready, once completed, you're ready to then begin play. And the final piece of general setup is setting up the event cards. You will have two types of event cards. One set or two cards that have a sort of aqua color and then a set that has more of a blue color to it. So what you want to do is you want to take growing populations. That will always be the first event. And then Conquest of the Persians will always be the last event. Take the other 14 remaining event cards, shuffle them, and randomly select seven cards. Dealing them into the stack, placing them just like so. So that when they're face down, the first event is going to be Growing Populations. And as you go through the game, the last one will be Conquest of the Persian. So you should have a total of nine event cards ready to begin play. Set this off to the side, ready to, uh, to draw to start the game. So it's at this stage of the game, before you begin uh, to go down the track of rounds A through G, you sh all players should now activate the first thing, if available, on their civilization track. So each player should go through, read the, uh, the starting point. So Athens here, at the start of the game, gains three philosophy tokens. So player one would take three philosophy tokens into their hand. Adding this to their resources. And, Olymp and that is an instant action as indicated by the lightning bolt. The two above this have infinity markers, which means they are ongoing effects whenever a condition is met. And the last one is victory point related, usually for an end game condition. Olympia, at the start of the game, gains one tax. So what they'll do is, it says here, go up one on the owl track. So they will move up one on the tax track, as indicated by the owl. One sort of um, iconography to note is, if you see the owl without an outline, that refers to the tax track. If you see an owl that has a black border or dark border behind it, that refers to Drachmi. So keep those in mind as you're going through the game. You'll notice on the culture track, there are four positions in which you're going to move up uh, the tax track. These are tax track uh, icons, not Drachmi. Now we're ready to begin the phases of a round. So once a starting player has been chosen, you're ready to begin the game. Starting with the game turn, we're going to go down this track one by one during the course of the, uh, the round. Event announcement. The start player reveals the top card of the event deck. The effects do not happen yet. So we will reveal the top card, which we already know uh, is the growing populations. During the dice phase this round, each player who rolled a combined total of four or less on their dice gains one philosophy tokens. We'll see here that the dice round is down here on C. So we'll keep this off to the side until we need to resolve its condition. Once the event has been announced, we're going to move into B, tax. You're going to gain one drachmi equal to your tax level. Off screen, all players started at a zero. However, Olympia had the, uh, at the start of the game, gain one uh, tax. So they, at this point, would take one drachmi into their supply. Once the tax phase is complete, we're going to continue down into the dice phase. It is in this phase that all players will roll and choose their actions. So all players, at the start of the game, have two dice in their possession. Each player is going to roll the dice and then get ready to assign them. Let's take a look at what that assignment looks like by taking a closer look at everyone's tiles, which are identical. You have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So equal to the numbers on the dice minus the 0, which can always be taken. So if a player were to assign philosophy, they would gain one philosophy token. If they were to assign legislation, 
they would gain three civilization or uh, three citizens, then draw the top two cards from the politics decks, politics deck, choose one to add to your hand and place the other at the bottom. If they choose culture as an action, they will gain um, victory points equal to the culture track on their player board. If they choose trade, they will gain one drachmi more than their current economy level. Then they may purchase an additional token, those red, green, and blue tokens, similar to the ones that are out in available for exploration, but these are from the general supply. They'll be able to purchase one for five drachmi. If they choose the military action, they're going to gain military, they're going to gain troops equal to the military level on their player board, then they may take an explore action. An explore action is a player sort of raiding or exploring in the main play area. If they take a politics action, they get to play one politics card from their hand. And lastly, if they take the development action, they'll be able to unlock the next development on their city tile, so that track on the left side of their civilization board. So now that we know what all the available actions are, each player will secretly assign their two available actions, which are their dice, to the tiles that they want. Keeping in mind that a player may increase the value of their die at the cost of removing a citizen from their track. So all players started on the three, it's, it's off screen at the moment, but if you needed, say, this one to be a two, if you have the citizens available to do it, you'll be able to. So each player is going to go through and determine what action it is that they would like to take. So I think for player one, they didn't have the best role, but uh, during this phase, we do see that during the dice phase, each player who rolls a combined total of four or less gains one philosophy token. So since player one had rolled one or sorry, four or less, they'll take one additional philosophy token into their supply since we're now at that triggering phase. This is going to be one of the few times that a, an event card is triggered mid-round. They'll usually be triggered down on phase F of the round. But player one, they need to make a decision. So let's say, for example, they want to do um, legislation to assign their one die to. So this would be done sort of face down. Players will reveal later. And they want to do a, hmm, let's say they're going to take a, a trade action. So they're not going to sacrifice any citizens. So they'll take the trade action, which is the three. So they're good to go. They're not going to need to uh, sacrifice any true or citizens to increase the value of their dice. Player two is going to need to do the same thing. They have a three and a four. So a healthier role. Let's see what they want to do. So player two is going to do the trade action, assigning this die to that one. And they're going to do the development action assigning this number four die to this tile. Now, at the moment, they don't yet have the available citizens, or sorry, uh, they have the available citizens that they will need in just a moment to complete this action. And now that all players have completed phase C, meaning they've rolled their dice and they've assigned dice to their tiles or the chosen actions, it's time to move into the D phase, the action phase. Complete actions, chosen during phase C. In general, all players have the ability to take their actions at the same time, except when it comes to a military action, which should be done in player order, starting with the starting player. So the starting player, though, is now the player with the lowest roll of the dice. So as it's worded more specifically, player who rolls the lowest total sum across their dice will be the start player for this round. If there's a tie between multiple players, the start player is the, the tied player closest to whoever was the start player in the previous round going clockwise. But for purposes of the most rounds, you're going to be able to resolve at the same time. So generally what we do is we're going to announce any, uh, so 
you're going to flip all the tiles so that everyone has exposed exactly what their actions are. Any players that need to then spend citizens to increase their die will do so at this stage. So player two, having needed to turn a four into a six, is going to move down the, the citizens track two. That was just done off screen. They now only have one citizen available. So starting in number order, we're going to say any zeros, any philosophy tokens, and then we would deal out those philosophy tokens, any ones. So all players with a one would sort of take their turn at the same time. So player one, or the orange player, will gain three citizens. So they're going to move up the citizen track from three to a six and draw the top two cards out of the, um, the politics deck, looking at them, and keeping one in their hand, moving the other to the bottom of the pile. Then you're going to go through any twos and then any threes. Now we have two threes here, and they can both do this pretty much at the same time. They're going to gain one drachmi more than their economy level. Both players, both players are at a one on the economy track, so both players would gain two drachmi into their supply. Once you've completed, go ahead and move the tiles off to the side. Any fours for military, no, any fives, and now any sixes. Unlock the development on your, or sorry, let's go back to that trade action. So players gain one more drachmi than their economy level, and then they may purchase an additional token. Player one and player two both are actually going to spend their money, so player one's going to spend their five drachmi to gain a, um, let's say they're going to gain a red token. They're going to bring that into their supply. And then player two or the blue player is going to gain a green token, bringing that into the supply. And that, this is a permanent token. It cannot be lost. Knowledge cannot be taken away is the kind of the, uh, the name of the game. Then on the development action, unlock the development tile. So they're going to be able to move up their development track on the city board, paying the cost as indicated above the text. So this level one for Olympia will cost them a knowledge of one culture. They do meet that requirement of having at least one culture token. Now moving forward, they can gain one, um, one troop and one philosophy token when they take a future culture action. Players can continue up this track when they take the development uh, action with their tile. The next level for Olympia is going to be quite a bit more expensive. They're going to need two culture and uh, one red token and spend two rock me to move up the track once more. And so that'll complete the action phase for all players. Let's go ahead and clear out the area. Moving now from phase D into phase E. Progress. Choose one track, the economy, the culture, or the military track, and pay the cost to increase it by one level. So moving up each of these tracks, you'll notice there's a number embedded in each of these slots. That is how much drachmi must be spent to move this track. So let's say player one only has one drachmi, and they wanted to spend that one drachmi to move up the culture track by one. These rewards are not gained until you cross them. It's not when you reach it, but it's when you, when you cross it. So I'll move up one more. That's when I would be able to go up this tax track. And if I went up yet again, that's when I'll gain the die. Only when I cross that threshold, not when I reach it. The blue player, they have quite a bit more money, and I think they may want to focus a little bit into their economy. So they're going to spend drop me and move up the economy track by one. That also nets them three citizens. So they're going to move up the track from one up to a four. Once all players have chosen to progress, then you're going to move into the event resolution. For round one, the event was actually uh, handled or triggered in the dice phase. So here we would not do it. But in subsequent phases, uh, there, uh, for subsequent rounds, there might be an event to resolve here. And lastly, we're going to check the achievement track on the main play uh, area. Players who unlock an achievement would gain uh, one 
Max or one glory if possible. Right now, since we started the game, no players have met the minimum conditions to achieve those um, achievements. And then lastly, you'll notice down at the bottom of the board, C, D, and E. These are additional actions that can happen during those phases. Example, in the C phase, as we uh, had discussed, a player may additionally spend one philosophy token to go up the citizen track three uh, points. So if you really needed extra citizens and you had philosophy tokens to spend, you could discard one or three citizens so that you can move up the track. In your action phase, you may spend two philosophy tokens to temporarily assign one of the three available tokens to your civilization. This would be temporary and not ongoing like a purchased token or a token from um, using the military action would be. And then lastly, in the phase E, the progress phase, which we had done a moment ago, a player may spend a philosophy token to move up any one of these tracks uh, one additional phase. So if player two, the blue player, had a philosophy token, which they do not, they certainly have the drop me to be able to move up the track again, so they may have wanted to spend one of those tokens to move up uh, any one of these three available tracks. Once you've completed the achievement check, then you're going to progress back to the event announcement. Player that was the lowest um, die roll in that previous round is still the start player. So the start player reveals the top card of the event deck. That player would then uh, reveal the next card in the phase. This one being Oracle of Delphi. All players lose one token. If you lose one, you gain um, two uh, progress tokens. Now again, this one doesn't say it triggers on any events, so this one would not trigger until here on the F phase on event resolution. So you have a little bit of time to plan and decide how you want to tackle that. So that's going to do it for the setup and how to as we've gone through all the phases of the how to play and uh, taken the individual actions. There are still small nuances and things like that, that uh, if, you, if you have any questions, you know, please just leave comments down below. The only thing that we kind of didn't uh, touch on is when a player takes an action up here, so that military action, they're going to go up this track, however many is indicated per their military track then they're going to be able to raid a destination. So let's say this player were to raid this destination. They need to have at least two troops to do it, and they're going to lose one troop in the process. Or if they have three uh, here, if they have three troops, then they won't lose any. So let's say they wanted to take this marker into their hand. They're going to be able to then only lose none of their troops. But if they took this one, they would have to move down the troops track. Additionally, glory track how this is scored at the end of the game. All players are gonna continue play until having played all nine rounds. Once the ninth round is complete, you're going to resolve the actions, check for the achievements, and then the game has ended and you're ready for final scoring. During final scoring, all players are going to start by adding victory points if they've unlocked anything on their city tiles that indicate that they would receive end game scoring. So Athens has such an end game condition where they would gain three victory points for each um, politics card they have in play. Next, you're going to gain any victory points from those politics cards. So if any of them have, uh, there's three types, You've got red, which is end game scoring. You've got purple, which is um, ongoing and persistent. And then you have yellow, which is an immediate effect. So if you have any end game uh, politics cards in play, then you're going to be able to score them additionally. Victory points equal to the glory track multiplied by any tokens that they have in their possession that have a wreath. So any of these major knowledge tokens that a player has multiplied by the glory track. So if a player, say, was only on a glory track of one, it would be one times however many of these major knowledge tokens they had in their possession. If it were a 10, then it would be 10 times that number. So let's say a player had three in their possession. Right now, that would score them three victory points. But if they were up here, that would score them 30 victory points. 
And then the player with the most victory points uh, wins. Any ties is the player with the most drunk me. So that's going to do it for this one, guys. If you do have any questions about the phases, about the um, action tiles, please leave a comment down below. I'm happy to, uh, to help out as best as I can. But I'm going to go ahead and tear down the table and bring you guys my afterthoughts. Stay tuned. Hey, everyone. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that setup and how-to for the game Korra. I know we had a few hiccups in there a little bit, but um, I'm pretty sure I hit all the points. So diving into my afterthoughts for this one, I'll tackle the uh, components and insert like I often do up front. So the insert, great components, mostly okay. So I was really excited that when I did the unboxing that there was a general setup, or sorry, a general organization already there in the form of a shrink tray. Every place had a, a, a place to be. It fit very nicely. All the tiles kind of everything down. It's great. I store it vertically without any troubles. Uh, the components, I say, okay, because on the one hand, the board is phenomenal quality. The player boards are um, dual layered, so you've got the inlets for your pieces, so you're not sliding anything around. Again, awesome. And then um, the coins and everything else are, are just punch board and, and chit tokens. Now, uh, this isn't like a, a deluxe version. It's just their kind of standard version, but man, I, I sure wish I, I, I looked and I was hoping to find like some Drachmi metal coins just to sort of enhance my experience, but I couldn't find any, uh, any resellers on that one, oddly enough, but uh, uh, components, mostly very good. Insert, great. So yeah, I, I really enjoyed Korra. You know, I demoed this a few years back at Gen Con. That's kind of my my exposure for a lot of games, but really, really had fun. There's there's definitely some complexity to this one. Um, and, and it takes a, a, most players that I've introduced this to about a, a, a round of, or two of, of phases. So there's nine rounds. Usually by about round two, they're they're pretty settled on on kind of what the 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 track is. There's it's still some hiccups when it comes to that uh, start player, if you will, being the, the player who, who rolled the, the least number and, and where it kind of kind of really comes into play and things like that. The rule book says that it only really matters when it comes to um, military. But it also kind of matters when you're doing the politics action because, you know, who's drawing hard before you, you know, if everyone's doing the number five action, the politics action at the same time, well, it kind of matters. Am I taking the first card or are you taking the first card? Things like that. Um, so yeah, the star player can get a little bit odd in, in that it will always be be changing and things like that. But no, no worries. Why is Korra a game you may want to add into your collection? Well, you like a, um, a sort of engine builder experience. Um, and the theme is is really good. One thing that I personally love about the game is that on the backside of the city tiles is uh, history on those uh, cities or civilizations or what have you, and it's really good. And then it, it really kind of lends and draws into why their city tiles and their developments are set up in, in the way that they are. So very cool in that respect. However, there isn't, uh, so, uh, so let me, let me step back. So another reason why you may want to add it to your own collection is, again, you like the theme, you like engine builders, uh, it flows really well. Um, overall, I like it. Um, definitely happy that it's in my collection. Why you may not want to add it to your collection is because lack of variety on two fronts. One, uh, the event cards, two, the, the cities themselves. I would have loved, and again, I like the history on the backside, but I would love to have the city tiles have like an A and B variant just to really add, a, again, that replayability. Reason being is because it feels as though, like, for example, I, I think it might be Argos. I, I, don't, I don't know how to double check it offhand, but I think Argos might be one of the least powerful cities. And, and there is a definite disparity in the city's power. So a reason why you may not want to add it into your collection is because depending on the city you get, um, you might be a little underpowered compared to others at the table. And that glory track is almost impossible 
to get to attend. So if you're going for a glory military victory, I don't know, you're, you're probably hurting yourself because to get there takes so much that you're, you're losing in other areas. It's not just, it hasn't been a great strategy for our playthroughs. So while there's variety in terms of the paths you can take, it's at the same time singular. <laughs> uh, I, I heard you explain beyond that, but you know, again, the lack of variety and the, the lack of balancing amongst the cities is the reason why you may not want to add it into your collection. By and large, I, I am happy that <laughs> this is a game that I picked up because it's one that I do enjoy, namely the theme. I'm, I'm a huge fan of, of the, the era, so uh, the theme definitely drew me in. The mechanics, very buttoned up, definitely a, a good flow and a good pace to the game. I like the uh, drafting the dice with the tile, that uh, sort of thing. And then to power up your dice, you, you can do other things, things like that. I do like that. But there's uh, uh, just other general reasons I sort of pull it back from getting to the table more often. Namely, like I said, event variety. And then, well, I already know if someone gets a, a civilization that's way better than mine, I'm probably going to have a, a harder time. So those are my thoughts. That's going to do it for this one. If you have any questions about Cora, please leave a comment down below. I'm happy to answer it as best, uh, as best as I can. If you um, enjoy the video and uh, you like the content, I do appreciate uh, the support. Feel free to leave a like and subscribe. And as always, everyone, until next time, thanks so much for watching.